Hello, everyone. Welcome to Friendly Local Game Store Day, where we celebrate game stores around the globe. I'm so excited to have you guys here with us today. My name is Dawn. I'm standing in for John Stacy, um, and we do this once a month. So if you want to get notifications, don't forget to subscribe and follow, and you'll get all of the fun Origins TV information. Today, we have two amazing uh, women-owned game stores with us that I'm really excited about. We've got Labyrinth Games and Puzzles uh, there in Washington, D.C., and Kathleen's joining us. And then we also have Dee, who is from Main Street Fun and Games, and they're in British Columbia, Canada. So we're really going on both sides of the, the continent today, which is a ton of fun. Um, so we're going to bring in D, or we're going to bring in Kathleen first, actually, from Labyrinth. And Kathleen is six blocks from the Capitol. So if you guys are visiting Washington, D.C. this summer with your families, this is a great store to go visit. Uh, it's incredible. I can't even explain the, the cool and unique stuff. So let's bring Kathleen in and have a chat with her. Hi, Kathleen. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. This delay is getting me because I look down and I'm like, Kathleen's not there, but she is there. <laughs> Adam has this all under control. He's fantastic. <laughs> um, uh, so how is Washington? How are you guys? Washington's good. Um, the weather is beautiful today, actually. So it's, it's great. I love um, spring in Washington. All the flowers and stuff are great here. I hear the cherry blossoms are phenomenal. Yes, it's already past cherry blossom time, but we're still having, we have a lot of azaleas going now, so it's really beautiful. Nice. Well, Kathleen, um, I have known for a while. Uh, I had a retail store and I was on the retail board for many years. And I met Kathleen along the way. And some of the cool things about Kathleen's store is just how unique it is um, to have her store in such a compact area because she's in such a populous area. So um, Kathleen, you want to tell us a little bit about what they're going to find when they come to Labyrinth? <laughs> well, Labyrinth, um, I started Labyrinth well, 10 Labyrinth, years ago. Um, I started Labyrinth 10 years, years ago. Um, I started Labyrinth and, and puzzles for all ages, um, all the way from babies up through, you know, Magic the Gathering and um, complex board games. And um, we also, I really love puzzles. So we have lots of puzzles, not just jigsaw puzzles, but wooden manipulation puzzles, um, all kinds of twisty puzzles. I, I love puzzles. Um, but we also have lots and lots of board games. We have a very active um, role-playing game um, community and magic and Pokemon communities as well. Um, so it's kind of, during normal times, coming into Labyrinth is kind of a, a place to come and play. And we have a huge game library. We have tons of demos out that people can just hang out and play with. Um, it's a little different now. We're starting to get back to that. But um, yeah, it's yeah. just a fun place to come hang out, I think. Yeah, it looks really, really fun. I promise Kathleen that soon I will be visiting because mm -hmm. I I have um, definitely um, admired your store from afar and I'm really excited that uh, consumers are going to get to see this little like tidbit into the world of Labyrinth. We will come back and visit you when things are a little bit more normal. Um, Kathleen was a big winner for um, a retail award that Gamma, which is Origins um, overseeing uh, nonprofit, uh, she won a, a huge uh, award this year and we're very proud to have her on the show. And if you do get a chance to go, you're definitely going to want to. We're going to talk more about some of the cool things that she does. But I want to kind of show you this walkthrough video that Kathleen did for us so you can kind of get a glimpse inside Labyrinth. Um, and I want you to pay attention because I always joke with her that utilizing the space the way that she has, that she has definitely created a labyrinth within her labyrinth. So <laughs> if we want to watch that video. Hi, and welcome to Labyrinth. We're in Washington, D.C. on Capitol Hill, about six blocks from the U.S. Capitol. Let's go in. This is the east side of the store, and we have um, 
some of our miniatures and paints and this is our sanitation station um, we normally have a display now our display is about all of our staff picks we have um, classic games like chess and backgammon and um, some ancient games like the game of Ur and Senate and then going into the store we have um, a bunch of wooden puzzles. Um, we love wooden manipulation puzzles. Normally during non-COVID time, these are more spread out and we have demos that everyone can play with because we love people playing in our store. And this is some of our team. Um, and we have our RPG section up here and um, a lot of dice and our magic behind the counter and some of our singles in our display cabinet. Um, we have a kiosk where people can search our entire um, singles display, and um, this is where we keep most of our singles, and that's Daryl. Hi, Daryl. Um, and then we have some t-shirts. We have a big two-player game section um, that's up here that's been very popular during COVID. Um, and then we go down a couple stairs, and we have our nostalgia game section which has a bunch of classic games like Uno and Bogle and Neil Bourne and um, Yahtzee, Rummy Cube, one of my favorites. Um, and then we have more classics over on this side. And then we go into our main board game section. We have our LCG packs over here and um, all of the board games. Um, right now, our play space is filled with jigsaw puzzles. So currently all of our jigsaw puzzles are back here. This is usually one of our play space areas. Um, we also have puzzle books and then our more complex board games are over on this wall. Um, we have a lot of small games in the center and party games and um, other things back here. Um, and then we have a whole other side of the store, which is, um, hello, there's Joe and his mom, hi, um, and then this is our kids' side of the store. We start with the youngest ages and go around to older kids' stuff. This is three and four-year-old type stuff, and then we continue to go around and... We have lots of staff in here right now because we're getting ready to get a bunch of shipments. Um, and this is older kids stuff. We have right now, usually this table has a bunch of demos out that everybody can play with. But right now it is our family game section. We have a huge wall of Lego. And then we have kids puzzles back here and some Duplo. And right now, this is our pickup window for um, orders that are made online, express pickup, so people don't have to come in the store. And then we have a huge marble maze in the window and all of our Cuba maze and magnetile stuff. And another register over here. And that's Labyrinth. Thanks. Bye. It's so good. It is amazing. Like... If you are in Washington, D.C., you definitely need to come see Kathleen's store. It's just incredible. And what a great way to add uh, to a fun trip to Washington anyway. You've got all the free museums. You can go to Kathleen's store. You can learn a little history or brush up on history. Um, <laughs> We're just a few blocks from the Library of Congress in the Capitol. So it's a really easy... Right? Um, yeah, we're six blocks from the Capitol. We're about five blocks from the Library of Congress, about six blocks from the Supreme Court. Um, and we're in a, um, in a neighborhood called Eastern Market. So uh, directly across the street from my store, every weekend we have an enormous um, arts market and kind of flea market, um, which is really fun. So another thing that I really wanna talk about um, for your store, which makes me proud as a retailer, is that you really spend a lot of time engaging with your community and doing a lot of community outreach, which I think is important. And I think even if you're a tourist coming to, um, 
at Washington, D.C., you're going to feel that in Kathleen's store. And I think that that's a great addition to your family vacation. So can you tell us a little bit about some of the programs you've created and how it kind of flows over even into your weekend activities or your um, after school activities? Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, before the um, pandemic, before the quarantine, we used to host about 700 events a year. Um, both in store and out of store. So we ran after school game clubs in about 13 different schools. Um, we would go multiple times a week to each school um, to handle all different age grades um, or grades. Um, we would start at three years old and I've run programs all the way through high school age kids. Um, mostly in the after school classes, we would focus on elementary school, but we have run middle school and high school um, classes as well. In the store, we do everything. I mean, from, you know, LCG tournaments to X-Wing tournaments to magic tournaments regularly, Pokemon League. Um, but we also really focus on kids programming. So we have a very, very popular um, kids D and D program that we called the Guild of Heroes, um, and then we also teach kids to play Pokemon, and we have Pokemon hangouts. So my Pokemon professor, who is um, a judge and has judged the world tournament and everything, um, he teaches all the kids how to play. And we have like board game nights for kids so that they can, it's called kids night out. So parents can go out to dinner and we play games with all their kids. But then we also do a lot of stuff for adults too. We do boozy board game nights at three local bars. So we go yeah. out to the bars and take um, all the games there. And then my staff actually circulate. So it's kind of like a mini game con in a bar. Um, and my, my staff circulates and teaches people to play new games. And uh, yeah, we, I mean, anything and everything we can do to get out into the community. We do game nights at schools, everything we can do. Cause I, that was my main goal when I opened the store was I wanted something to do. I wanted a, you know, a flexible job that I could still raise my son, but I really wanted my store to give back to the community. Capitol Hill is an amazing neighborhood and I wanted to kind of bring that together. I love that. I, I, I've told you a thousand times how much I love that. But one of the other things that really strikes me is that because you're in such a popular tourist attraction, I had a lot of crossover from my store to your store. And people would come back and they would say, Dawn, Kathleen is so much like you. Her entire staff is so welcoming and so kind. And that's really great that that carries through through the customers all the way back to a store, to another store, right? Um, so that says a lot about your your um, what you've built and what you've created and making it a safe, fun um, environment. And um, that's one of the things, right? You, everybody's welcome in your store. I love to travel. And I think I my entire life, I've loved meeting tourists. Um, I've always lived in kind of tourist cities. I lived in New Orleans and Mexico City and Miami and now DC. And I just love knowing where people are. And I think my staff does too. Plus DC is such a transient area that yeah. we constantly have people from all over the world. Yeah. Um, I mean, I now have Facebook friends from all over the world that I met in the store and they just ended up staying for game night. And it's, um, it's great. I love it. That's incredible. Well, I think that you represent the United States board gaming community very well. And that's part of the reason why um, here at Origins TV, we want to start focusing more on those friendly local game stores. And you're a completely uh, like amazing example of that. I do want to talk about a couple other things. I want to talk about your love for puzzles because in your store, I've always said most game stores, if people are really looking around, they think that it's this or that. Each store has a personality and yours definitely is different because of the variance of puzzles that you offer. You also offer Lego and um, just really good games. Now we touched on it on the beginning when you talked about what brought you into this, but you've told me this story before. I think you could share it about how you were more of a puzzle person. I was, I actually was not a gamer at all when I opened the store. I mean, I've always loved games, but I grew up as an only child. Um, and so my true love was always puzzles. Um, 
And when I first came up with the idea of the store, it was more kid focus. Like I, I had thought more, there are lots of families on Capitol Hill um, and a lot of the people really like to spend time with their kids and growing up games and puzzles were one of my favorite ways to connect with people. So that's kind of where the idea came from. And I just, I got really lucky that I kind of opened at the same time that there was this major, you know, in, growth in board gaming, right? So like, I, I just kind of hit it at the right time and I was really lucky. But um, when I first announced it, I announced it to a mom's group here on Capitol Hill. And one of the women was a huge gamer and got me in touch with all these other gamers. They're like, who are you? We don't even know you. Like, why are you opening a game store? And luckily a lot of people, a lot of other stores um, helped me a bunch when we first opened up. I'm a pretty big gamer now though. <laughs> Yes, yes, you are. Yeah. And um, that's, I mean, the thing about it is, is that that changes everything, right? Like I never did D&D before I opened the store. Now, seven, eight years in, I'm addicted to role-playing games. So, uh, you know, it changes how we are and it, it kind of cultivates us into the store that we all become. Well, you have a phenomenal store. I've said it all, all along. As a colleague, I'm in all of you constantly. You're fantastic. Thank you so much for being on the show with us. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I've learned so much from you over the years and I really appreciate everything you've done for our industry too. Uh, thanks, Kathleen. All right. Well, when I was speaking with Kathleen, you guys, we were talking about the different things that really hit for her, right? What games does she do well with? What does she sell a lot of? What does she go to? And one of the, one of the companies for many companies, because Kathleen does a lot of games, was that she does a lot of Amigo games. And if you're not familiar with Amigo games, this is your opportunity because on Friendly Local Game Store Day, we actually celebrate some of the publishers that help us become who we are as retailers. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Alex Yeager, who is the newest member of the Amigo team, and he's going to share some of their, we call them in the industry evergreens, they're the games that those of us in retail uh, sell often and sell for many, many years and it will be staples in our store. And then he's going to share some things that are new too. How are you doing today, Alex? I'm doing very well. Thank you so much. I'd make sure I was, I was going to, I was about to become the one person on every Zoom call who starts to talk and doesn't unmute their mic, but uh, no, it's, it's terrific to be here. And it's, I, I really, I really enjoyed listening to the presentation with uh, Kathleen from Labyrinth and, and everyone is also going to enjoy the, the uh, presentation a little later who at the main street, uh, because it, we are in a position, at least while we're taping this, that uh, things are just starting to open up again. Uh, quarantines are starting to be lifted. We're beginning to see in the future where we might have game conventions again uh, in a limited and safe way, but being able to sit at a table and play games with people again. And most important, to travel again, to go to a location, to visit yes. something like Washington DC and actually and actually experience uh, you know experience going into a building and 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 seeing people and interacting with them, and one of the great things about travel for me is to absolutely find where the local game stores are in the cities that I'm about to go to, and make a point to stop in and look around and ideally to make a a purchase however small that might be, um, and that's you know certainly gamma. The, the, you know, the Game Manufacturers Association that runs Origins has a game store locator on their site. So you can very easily go out there, type in uh, the city or the zip code that you're gonna be visiting and find out what stores are in the area. But in addition to just visiting a store, I do like to go in and make a purchase oftentimes so that I have a game. Uh, I don't have my game library with me when I travel. So it's nice to have at least a, a couple of games or perhaps to get a, a new one or a new version of a game while I'm on the road, possibly to leave that at the hotel that I'm at or leave that in a, in a coffee shop uh, on my way out of town if, if that's appropriate as well. And so often those games that I gravitate towards are the evergreen games, those games that I know people are gonna love that have a, a track record that, that goes back for years and years that I know 
that if I put it on a shelf somewhere or someone discovers it, they're going to be discovering a really good game that has a really high likelihood of being something that they want to play. And a couple of the games I wanted to show this afternoon absolutely fit that mold. And the first one uh, from Amigo, and Amigo, of course, has a 40-year history of creating really amazing games, uh, many of which have stood the test of time. Players that have encountered things like uh, Take Five or Six Nymph, uh, players, certainly Saboteur is a game that, again, has a long, uh, a long and storied history with the company and in the game industry. And a game that's right alongside that is Bonanza. This game is going on 25 years old. It remains a classic for a very important reason. It is one of the best games about trading that you will encounter in the market anywhere. And the game itself, again, is very simple. It's very portable. Again, you're talking about a deck of cards and that's all you need to be able to play with up to seven players out of the base game box. And this is a game that has expansions, dozens of expansions and standalone games. So there's lots of different ways to play it. But at its core, it is a game about bean farming. And if you think that sounds like a weird title, you will or a weird subject matter, you will be surprised how memorable and dramatic it can be after your first game of Bonanza. But at its core, you have these bean cards. And bean cards are very simple. They have a cute little picture of the bean and the name. But for game purposes, this number is how many of that card is in the deck. And at the bottom is how many beans you must grow in a field in order to get the amount of money shown. So in this case, if I have at least four beans in a field, I'm going to get one gold piece, which means I will simply take that, add that to my score pile as a point towards winning. And then I will have cleared my, I will have harvested my beans in order to plant something different there. A game turn is simply play one or two cards from your hand, draw two cards, which you're gonna to use to trade with other players, and then draw cards to your hand. But the key of the game and what really is important about the game is the idea that you cannot change the order of cards in your hand. So when you get cards, they always come into the back of your hand. Whenever you have to play cards, you always have to play the oldest card in your hand, the card that you see face up in your hand. And that makes this game really interesting because of the trading. So if you like games that have trading in it, this is a game that not only is not only uses trading in a way that is very active, that the more you trade, the better you will do, but it's really easy in this game to make, uh, to make trades that everybody wins on. So often when you play a game that involves trading, it's like, oh, yeah, I got the worst of that deal, or there's some sort of zero sum, you're going to win, but I can't win because you win sort of uh, element to the trading. In this game, trading, there are so many reasons to trade and everybody can have a positive reason to trade. I can trade because I want to give you a card or because I want a card that you have. I can trade to change the order of cards in my hand and it's the only way to change the order of cards in my hand. So in order to make my hand more efficient and get cards together that I want to plant, I have to trade away or even give players a card. This is a game where I can give somebody a card and it can be good for both players. It's a wonderful, wonderful game. It's very interactive. People have a lot of fun being able to, to always be involved in the action with the, the way the trading works in the game. It's a terrific game for up to seven players. And uh, it is available now. We'll have an actually Amigo version of this game out later in, uh, later in the summer. Uh, no changes to the cards or the rules or anything, but it, it's gonna be our chances Amigo to begin to sell this game and uh, pay attention. If you really do like Bonanza, next year is the 25th anniversary and we're planning some really interesting stuff uh, to celebrate that fact. So Bonanza, the game, I absolutely, and I love playing it. And I love showing it off because it is such a good game and it has been a, such a good game for a very long time. That's awesome. So another game, and it's, it's even one that, uh, that uh, we've talked about a couple of times as a game that you really love. It's a game called No Thanks. I love and that this, game. <laughs> this is such a good game and it is such a simple game and at its core uh, it is such an easy game to teach and it's a great game to put down in front of someone and be able to say you're going to know how to play this game in a minute uh, and then you're going to see some really interesting ways that uh, the gameplay manifests but at its core you have a set of cards and these cards are simply the value of the numbers there we go right side up uh, is simply the values between three and thirty five. So cards with three, four, five, all the way up to 35. 
and you also will start the game with a set of these little black of uh, these little tokens. So on your turn, you will simply be encountered with a card that has been flipped up from the deck, and your choices are to take that card for the number of bad negative points that that card represents. In this case, that's 24 points. You don't want points. 24 points doesn't sound very good. It's or a game, right? Exactly. Yeah, it's like, eh, you know, with th from, from three to 35, 24 doesn't sound like a great number. So what you no. can do is simply give up one of your tokens, place it on that card and say, I don't want it. Someone else can have it. And we continue around and someone else doesn't want it. And someone else doesn't want it. And it's back to you again. And now again, you can have to either you take that number or in this case, I'm taking that number plus all of the tokens that are on it. Tokens are positive points at the end of the game and point and tokens give you flexibility to take other, you know, to not take cards later in the game as well. So in this case, I might go, eh, you know what, I'm going to take that 24 and the tokens that go with it. So what's now in the other fun part of the game is, let's say the next card's a 23. Cards, two or more cards that are in a sequence when you score, only score the lowest card in the sequence. So for everybody else, that card is negative 23. For me, I actually would get a positive point. Instead of scoring 24, I would only score the 23 in that instance. So that's a good card for me. And it's even better when I say, well, I don't want that 23. And everybody else puts tokens <laughs> on it. And I go, you know what? I still don't want your 23. And everyone else looks at me angrily because <laughs> I now have to put another token on it. And I can see how far I can push my luck to be able to take a lot of tokens into my pile, unless <laughs> hopefully someone else doesn't look at it and go, you know what? There are enough tokens on there. I'm just going to take that. Yep, until they call your bluff. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so it's a super simple game to teach. It's a it, it game lasts 10 to 15 minutes. The player who has the highest score, which is basically your negative scores from your cards plus your positive scores from your tokens that are left. Super easy to teach, super easy to play, portable, and a, and a lot of fun. Really portable. It's one of those games you can literally put in your purse, put in your coat pocket, you know, and head to the bar and you want something fun to do, you know, or waiting. We were, I was telling you that when we're waiting at Disney for food, you know, we're playing the game you know, back in pre times, <laughs> we're playing the game, we'll right? Come again. They will, they will, they will be there again. I am sure. Will. It's just such a great game to just pack up and take with you. So anybody out there watching highly recommend easy to teach ton of fun. And now you have something new for us, right? I, I wanted to, you know, it's always nice to be able to give you a little bit of a sneak preview, reward the people like who it. Are with something to look forward to. And this is a game that I wanted to show because uh, the, the, two game, the two game stores that you're seeing today, I think are really good examples of everyone who goes into a game store ought to be excited about what's there. And, it, and that means if you are a gamer, sure, you're going to go into a game store and you're going to find lots of things you enjoy. If you're an adult, you go into a game store and you're going to see maybe games that you played as a kid and they may be mass market games, but you still have an attachment to those games. You still appreciate those games. And if you're a young child, if you're like a five-year-old going into a store, you need to be able to find things that you want to play, things that you are excited about. Everyone who walks into a game store ought to have that experience of being excited. And Amigo Games really does have games that reach down almost to that four and older, six and older crowd, so that there is something that you can, we can, you can offer to game stores that they can have those games to excite a child when they come in that may not be quite ready to play a, a more complex board game, but certainly, certainly can find games that they're going to want to play. And one of the games we have coming up later in the year is called Clack Thwack. Now, this is the third in a series of games, uh, clack games that we have. And the clack games are all kind of use these, the, the first two of them at least, use these great little magnetic pieces. So you're trying to uh, quickly identify a set of, of, of symbols or colors. And in order to claim something, you simply snap it up with these little magnetic pieces and grab them. So they're a lot of fun. We've had a lot of success with them. The third game, Clack Thwack, doesn't have those magnetic pieces, but works roughly the same way with a cool new little toy twist. So in this instance, we still have these tiles and these tiles have uh, three objects on them that are some color, one of three colors, or one of three types of object, plants, animals, or vehicles. 
So on your turn, we roll dice, and there are seven of these out. And you're going to try and find tiles that match what you roll. In this case, we're trying to find tiles that have two red things on them. We could have, for example, rolled, look for something with zero green things on them or zero vehicles on them. But in the case of two red, we see that this tile has two red on it. And if we are the first to take our thwacker, our cute suction cup fly swatter here and go thwack and claim it, that's a point. That's one point towards victory for us. Do we have to yell like, thwack too? Because that makes it amazing. Yeah. All right, right, thwacking. And there's another thing, there's a really cute other element to the game, which is there are seven of these out. And often, most of the time, you're going to roll these dice and you're going to have at least one tile out on the display that's going to match this. And of course, everyone has their own thwacker, so we're all trying to do this as quickly as you can. But in the center of those seven tiles is our little clack thwack tile. And if none of the tiles, if none of the seven tiles match what you roll on that dice, if you're the first to thwack that center tile, that lets you claim all of the other tiles on the display. This is a seven point tile. Ooh. If and only if nothing on the table matches what the, what's rolled on the dice. So there's this other really exciting element of, of, I don't see something. Hey, do I really not see anything? And are the first one to recognize that, nope, none of the seven tiles match and you grab that center one. So- Competitive Dawn just got real excited about that. <laughs> It's it's a really interesting fun game. It's 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 a it's a it's a re, it's an inexpensive game at fifteen dollars. And again, it's the kind of game you can see, you can impulse buy at a store, play it, leave it behind at a at a at a hotel, uh, or you know someplace where other people can enjoy it if you already have it in your collection. Looking forward to having that out, and that'll be probably uh, early early late summer, early fall for us. But clack thwack third in the clack line, really really fun game. That is awesome. Yeah, I'm really excited about some of the titles you guys have picked up. It's a, it's a ton of fun, but you guys, uh, Amico Games has always had quite a, a strong um, selection of, for, like you said, from kids games to adult games, something, something to excite everybody. I am a child and love all games. So when people ask me what I like, I'm like, yeah, I, it's hard for me to find a game I don't like. But then when I don't like a game, I just, you don't bring it in your store, right? But we had tons of Amigo games. We love Amigo games. Some of the other games, you showed me a game. I'm putting you on the spot now because that's what I do. Um, what is, there was a game you showed us the other day with the, um, it feels a little bit like that, but it, um, it had the, um, uh, association with the letters and the, oh, he has it on, on hand. Oh, right. Yes. Flip okay. picks. Yeah, flip picks. I'll, I don't want to take too much time here because I oh, really, really want to, I really want to see Dee's store, but uh, I'll tell you about that quickly. This is another one that'll yeah. be in the year. Um, cards have either three letters on one side or four pictures on the other. And so you'll start the game with one of these picture tiles face up. Everyone else has a stack of these cards in their hand, of which I can use any or all of them, or I can use any of them at any time. And so we'll say go. And now we're looking really hard to find a letter that matches something in the picture. So for example, I could look at that and go, oh, hey, I have a D, D for diamond. And I'd play my card and then I'd say flip. So now we all flip our cards and we're looking on the picture side, for a picture that matches one of the letters that's on the table and you're trying to play through your cards as quickly as you can. The fun is, is that it doesn't have to be uh, a literal translation. So for example, that can be a diamond, that could be a stone, it could be a gem. You can use any kind of word that has an association with that picture, not just the literal uh, explanation of what that. So for kids, it's a great kind of vocabulary, kind of can I identify the things yeah. and find a letter that matches. For adults, it's how creative can you be with the matches that you get. You can even play this more creatively. So we're going to be doing a whole, when we release this, I think we're going to do like a variant week where we're going to talk about different ways to play. And one of the ways to play is, for example, can you only use adjectives to identify the things that are on oh, this? Yeah. Tiny, hard, you know, and just use those words to be able to do the picture. So lots of different ways to play. This is a game, again, it'll be out in uh, out this fall, late summer. We'll have it at, uh, at the at Origins and Gen Con. Yes. And really excited about this one as well. Thank you. So uh, we'll be seeing it at the demo tables at Origins. Anybody that's coming by can stop by and uh, demo it. But you also could, um, 
I believe that they're going to have a link so that per people at home that are doing the virtual um, origins can actually purchase it as well. So everybody has an opportunity to get involved in this, which is amazing. So I'm excited. Alex? And those people that can't travel yet or still yeah. for whatever reason, yeah. uh, or international fans as well, Origins yeah. is going to have that 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 all important virtual element yeah. still alongside, so you can enjoy you can enjoy your experience uh, as virtually as you can, yeah. even if you can't make it to Columbus this this fall. So I also see this game. I um, for as small a, I live in a big small city, right? Like it's it's a city, but it's still kind of small, right? But we have a ridiculous amount of colleges. Um, I can see the college kids playing this game too. We don't have to go too far into it, but we could take it to a bar and it could be pretty fun. I think this game is phenomenal for everybody. I'm so thankful you joined us today. Thank you to Amigo Games. Thank you to Alex. You've always been such a supporter of the game industry and we are blessed to have you part of our industry. Thank you so much for coming. Well, thank, thank you guys. And, and certainly thank you, Kathleen. Thank you, Dee. Uh, thank you for having our games in your stores and having success with them. Uh, I look forward to seeing everybody, including, including of course, you guys uh, as shows as we get into the fall. Yeah, it'll be fun. Thanks so much. Thank you. Well, last but not least, we're going to talk with Dee Connell, who is from Invermere, British Columbia, over in Canada, way on the West Coast away from me. But uh, I get to see Dee usually about twice, once, once a year. And um, she is phenomenal. I cannot wait for you guys to meet her. Hello, Dee. Hi. How are you? How is your town? Our town is starting to get busy again. It's doing yeah. good. Yeah. Awesome. Well, you have an interesting, um, you have an interesting town too, because it is a vacation destination. D oh, very uh, much. Yeah, her town is busy in the summer. So for most of us retailers, we're used to Christmas being our, our high time. But for D, it's right now. Like this is her busy time. And why is that? Let's talk about your town a little bit. Because anybody that is um, watching the show is going to be really, really excited about your town too. Kathleen, most of us that are watching from the States, we know a lot about Washington, D.C., but your town is, I think, a hidden gem so we are a teeny little town of 3,000 people. Uh, we are between the Rocky and the Purcell Mountains. Uh, we have a, a huge valley called the Columbia Valley, which is the source of the Columbia River that flows into Astoria, Oregon, which uh, connects us all. Um, we are also cottage country. So our town is about 3,000 people in the low season, but in the summertime, we go up to about 30,000 people. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's very overwhelming, um, <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. It's, yeah, we get, we, our town just comes to life and is vibrant for those two months of the summer. And then we go back to being our sleepy little town the rest of the year, which we like as well. <laughs> sure. So we're flashing through some pictures of your town right now, and it is absolutely stunning. Like, I saw... A <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I saw a Facebook picture, a post that you did the other day, and he was just paddling away, just paddling away. And then uh, I told her it looked very, very relaxing until I looked up and saw all those snow-capped mountains. And she said, well, they're far enough away that we can still <laughs> feel comfortable and warm. So it's beautiful. It's true. But it did snow pretty low down. I mean, we, we definitely get snow in the mountains well into May. So yeah, we're still getting some snow up there. We did in Indiana too. So what do you know? Oh, well, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> um, or maybe it was late April, maybe early May. It doesn't matter. But your town looks amazing. And you just recently you. moved your store. Um, we did. I know is a huge undertaking. Um, it's very, um, very nerve wracking. But now visitors that come to your, your store are going to see this amazing. It's just beautiful. I can't. Uh, I can't brag about it enough. It is gorgeous. Um, oh. it, it, you, you, you describe it as like that European toy store vibe, right? Yes. When you walk in, you get the feeling that you've walked into an old European toy store. The, the store is a hundred years old. It's just a beautiful, classic old building. It's just, uh, it just has such a wonderful feel and it's a, 
it's my dream location. It's where I've always wanted the store to be. So we, um, when it came up for rent this fall, I just couldn't, I couldn't not do it. I had to do it. So it was a big endeavor though. We were pretty overwhelmed by the whole idea, particularly yeah. in the middle of a pandemic. We right. just didn't know how, what to expect, but our customers got on board and, and they were, in fact, many of our customers helped us move. I know. So, that's so amazing. And that's a great, yeah. Like that just goes to show the community that you have have cultivated there. It's fantastic. I before we go in and start talking about your store, um, let's take a look at it because you did a walkthrough, and I want people to see your store, and then we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more. Welcome to Main Street Fun Games. Come on in and take a look. So we are located in Invermere, British Columbia. We are in a heritage building. It is one of the oldest buildings in town, about 100 years old, uh, which gives us these amazing windows and some incredible light and some really fun features to work with inside of our store for display. Um, we're 50-50 toys and games. Uh, we focus mostly on games that are imaginative play and create a, a world for kids to play with. We, our games are mostly focused for beginner to intermediate gamers, as most of our gamers are tourists that are coming in to look to connect with their families. Lots of card games, lots of quick games, things that you can sit down and play really fast or learn really fast because most of our gamers have not played a lot of hobby games yet. Um, we have a lot of stuff for families that are just in for the weekend that want to go to the beach or just have some quick activities to keep the kids busy. And of course we have a ton of games. Um, as I said, we have a lot of beginner gamers and Amigo is a really great option for us. We love them. Uh, they have an extensive line of games that we can start with very, very beginner gamers and work them all the way up to some good starter hobby games that they can, uh, they can learn from. And then we have the game section which it's really hard because we are limited in our space to curate the games that we pick. So we tend to pick the games that we love playing the most, like Tiny Towns, which is one of our absolute favorites. We are a tourism community and tourists who have cabins in particular and summer homes love puzzles. So our line of puzzles is huge. We do focus mostly on Cobble Hill because they are uh, Canadian provider and we absolutely love to work with them. I hope you liked our little tour. If you have any uh, ideas, send them to us. It really is so charming. Oh, like, thank you. I like that is the best way to describe it. Like I just light up like a little kid when I see it. So where you're a little bit different from Kathleen, Kathleen has a ton of like heavy games oh. for her. Didn't get the other dog, I guess, from the eye. <laughs> <laughs> Kathleen is, um, Kathleen's store has a ton of like really heavy, um, uh, deep games. You, you just, it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't work for you because you have new gamers, entry-level gamers, which is awesome. And you, you, you definitely pick some of the best, but you have a weird, um, like on your, on your walkthrough, we heard you talking about because I'm Canadian, right? You have challenges that American stores don't have and, uh, consumers that visit, you have to understand that your, um, your trade is not as easy as it comes to us Americans. So um, I think you've cultivated a great selection for. Oh. for <laughs> Thank you. It, we do have our challenges in Canada, um, but honestly, we have some wonderful distributors as well who work with us. Yeah. Um, sometimes selection, um, I, I get a little jealous on occasion of some of the things that show up in the States and I'm like, gee, it'd be nice to, you know, get those here, but we work really hard. Um, and we have some distributors that are willing to actually work with us to bring those things in. So we do our best to bring in some of the, the really wicked cool stuff that we can, uh, Film Brain Games has been amazing. Um, 
And we've got a few others as well, Creature Creations coming soon too. So I'm super excited about that. Um, we do have, like you said, we don't have a lot of more uh, heavy hobby games. Our games, because the people that are coming to Invermere mostly are tourists, they're families, they're looking to connect with each other. They're looking to turn off those screens and just find a few minutes to just spend some time together as a family, looking at each other instead of the screens. So we do our best to make sure we provide a lot of options and a lot of games where they can start simple and grow and find games that, you know, we, we start them with things like Suro and move them up into games that are more and more complicated. So yeah, we love it. That's awesome. Uh, I noticed in the background, you've got Wingspan back there, which I didn't have in my we store for a long time. I <laughs> I think Elizabeth is local to um, Labyrinth at, in Washington, DC. So um, a lot of fun little crossovers there in the world. Um, tell me a little bit about what, um, st you, what started you on this journey. What brought you into the world of game store craziness? <laughs> I get a call uh, <laughs> So I like to say I accidentally bought a game store. Um, <laughs> I was working for uh, the main, well, another store uh, that was a toy and a little bit of games when I first started. Uh, and I ended up working as their manager, but the previous owner, who was wonderful, but he was ready to be done in retail. Uh, so my enthusiasm, I think, was exhausting for him, <laughs> and he had decided it was it was time for him to close up. But I needed a job. So I, I, we, he and I talked and eventually came to a, an agreement where I would take over the store. I ended up rebranding and um, sort of changed the focus from just toys and a few games to about 50-50 toys and games. We do have a lot of toys in the store as well, but uh, board gaming is my passion. Uh, it's the thing that I love to share with others and to connect our community with, and it is the thing that just gets me so excited. And we've grown over and over uh, in the last five years in the board game community and seen so many families start and become avid gamers and come in and say, hey, we bought this game on Kickstarter. And I was like, you know, three years ago, you didn't even know what Kickstarter was. So it's pretty cool to see. Yeah. You know, it's funny because Kathleen told me that you did more toys. And I was like, I don't know. I don't think so. Because <laughs> you and I talk about board games so much. Like in our groups, we talk about board games. And I was like, I think she's mostly. And then I watched the walkthrough and I was like, oh, look at Kathleen being all right and stuff. Uh, but it was funny because um, your passion for board games definitely shines through. And um, one of the things uh, that I love about Origins, I'm going to plug Origins a little bit again, is that that for me is one of the, the shows that you can go to and really sit down and play games. So if you ever get to travel to the States, you should definitely check out Origins sometime because it is like the decompressed version of a good game, like game convention because you have time to play the games and really absorb them it's not as fast paced as some of the other ones which is why your store seems so appealing to me because it seems very like come in you know learn games a very chill vibe um i get however if people want to they should follow you on social media because you and Deanna's social media is hilarious. I love it. You two are like kids in a candy store when you get new product in. It is fantastic. <laughs> Watching the joy in your face is amazing. So what started that? Is it just you wanted your customers to know how excited you were or? It's, it's because we're giant children, um, really. That's, <laughs> that's what started it. <laughs> Yeah, it's, we it really, we love it, to share. Uh, yeah, sharing our excitement when we get something new. We actually got something this week that I'm really really excited about that we haven't had time to open yet. So hopefully this week coming up, we'll have a new Facebook Live video to share with everybody. But sharing our excitement is part of the reasons that our customers keep coming back is because they know that we're so excited about the things that we that we do here, and they come in excited. Uh, when we got our Pathfinder Goblin. 
Uh, we had a name the goblin contest like most stores did, but people are still coming in even, you know, three months later asking to see the goblin that they saw on Facebook when we did the uh, opening. They, they are, they're part of our family. Everybody feels connected to the store because they're part of our social media and they know us personally when they come in and we, we talk about games with them. So, yeah. What did they end up naming your goblin? <laughs> um, his name is Vaughn. Oh. Slashy Pants. Vaughn Slashy Pants. Oh, nice. Inquiring yeah. minds wanted to know. That's fantastic. Oh, that's great. Um, before we go, let's talk a little bit about some of it because you jumped right in when we talked about Amigo. What are some of your favorite Amigo games? Oh, I love What the Heck. Um, it is, it's one of my favorites. Um, what other ones? Honestly, Bear Down. That, oh, yeah. The Bear Down game is, we've had so much fun with that one. So yeah. that one is great. Awesome. Um, is there anything else you so, want to know about? Um, yeah. Is there anything else you want us to know about um, Main Street Fun and Games? Because it is so unique from some of the other stores. Um, I want to give you an opportunity to talk about anything else that your heart desires. Oh, that's a tough question. I just, I mean, we're so small and we're so tucked away, but if you ever have a chance to come out this way, it is this, the valley that we live in. Uh, we have this incredible lake life. We have golf courses and we have skiing. So you have, I mean, anytime you come out here, um, just not only for our store, but just to visit, it's such, we're in such a special location. It's, yeah. uh, it, it, it's kind of magical. Everything about the valley is magical. And I mean, we try to emulate that in our store. We try to give people when they walk in an experience that, you know, they feel, they feel they've done, they've entered someplace special. And I, I, I hope we're doing okay with that. <laughs> It, it appears you are. It really does. From the outside looking in, it appears you're definitely doing that. And I would encourage anyone to go and visit you guys, um, both of you. Honestly, like what a fantastic opportunity to feature two very amazing women with amazing game stores um, in a time where, you know, last year we kind of thought for a minute that we don't uh, necessarily need game stores, some people may say. <laughs> But I think they forget them, you know, when you're so far removed, a year removed from what you guys and we all do, uh, you tend to forget those things. But I'm, I'm happy you guys are still with us. I'm happy that um, you're creating these amazing safe spaces for gamers of all walks of life to come and learn and share our industry. We're blessed to have. Uh oh go to British Columbia and go to Invermere, please do. If you get a chance to go to Labyrinth out in Washington, D.C., that's fantastic too. So thank you guys for coming. Dee, thank you so much for being with us. I appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Dawn. Yeah. That was really fun. Thank you. Good. I'm glad. Um, thank you to the viewers for coming and joining us. Um, I'm sure John Stacy will be back next week or next month. Our show is in June. I think it's the third June or the third weekend of June is always the third weekend of the month is always our show. So um, thanks for joining us and we'll see you guys next time. Have a great day. Bye.